tomorrow night, February 11th, we are doing a Welcome to Night Vale show. We're bringing back The Investigators, one of my favorite shows with some of my favorite ever Faceless Old Woman lines. Get your tickets here. Fake BBC show of the week, Wigan Snuggers. My friend Aaron came up with this one. Another installment of my embarrassing stories told through audio. I guess you have to understand that when I was a child, I made up stories about everything and everyone. Every single time we went out to a restaurant, I would start up a little silverware melodrama. My fork, the leading man, my spoon, the leading lady, and my knife was, of course, the villain. If I had a salad fork and a soup spoon, they would be the wise-cracking sidekicks who eventually fell in love. I don't know if all kids do this, but this was the fridge benefit of OCD synestia. Tomorrow night, February 11th, we are doing a Welcome to Night Vale show. We're bringing back The Investigators, one of my favorite shows with some of my favorite ever Faceless Old Woman lines. Get your tickets here. Fake BBC show of the week, Wigan Snuggers. My friend Aaron came up with this one. Another installment of my embarrassing stories told through audio. I guess you have to understand that when I was a child, I made up stories about everything and everyone. Every single time we went out to a restaurant, I would start up a little silverware melodrama. My fork, the leading man, my spoon, the leading lady, and my knife was, of course, the villain. If I had a salad fork and a soup spoon, they would be the wise-cracking sidekicks who eventually fell in love. I don't know if all kids do this, but this was the fridge benefit of OCD synestia. Tomorrow night, February 11th, we are doing a Welcome to Night Vale show. We're bringing back The Investigators, one of my favorite shows with some of my favorite ever Faceless Old Woman lines. Get your tickets here. Fake BBC show of the week, Wigan Snuggers. My friend Aaron came up with this one. Another installment of my embarrassing stories told through audio. I guess you have to understand that when I was a child, I made up stories about everything and everyone. Every single time we went out to a restaurant, I would start up a little silverware melodrama. My fork, the leading man, my spoon, the leading lady, and my knife was, of course, the villain. If I had a salad fork and a soup spoon, they would be the wise-cracking sidekicks who eventually fell in love. I don't know if all kids do this, but this was the fridge benefit of OCD synestia. Tomorrow night, February 11th, we are doing a Welcome to Night Vale show. We're bringing back The Investigators, one of my favorite shows with some of my favorite ever Faceless Old Woman lines. Get your tickets here. Fake BBC show of the week, Wigan Snuggers. My friend Aaron came up with this one. Another installment of my embarrassing stories told through audio. I guess you have to understand that when I was a child, I made up stories about everything and everyone. Every single time we went out to a restaurant, I would start up a little silverware melodrama. My fork, the leading man, my spoon, the leading lady, and my knife was, of course, the villain. If I had a salad fork and a soup spoon, they would be the wise-cracking sidekicks who eventually fell in love. I don't know if all kids do this, but this was the fridge benefit of OCD synestia. There are also attempts at tackling serious issues. The producers of the show love to talk about Alf having survivor's guilt because his planet blew up and he lived. Or about the episode where Alf dates a visually impaired woman. They don't seem to like to talk about the episode where 200-something old Alf hits on Tanner's teenage daughter, though. Or when the puppeteer as Alf made crude comments towards the actress playing the teenage daughter in real life. They have written off him saying the n-word, saying it reference to an LA episode with an additional predictable comments about how everybody's too damn PC these days. Apparently there was also comments about how everybody's too damn PC these days. Apparently there was also an episode about nuclear disarmament, which Alf was apparently very much for. Someone wrote on an essay on it, but even that essay ends with, so what does Alf have to teach us? Nothing really. At least nothing that we didn't already know. It was allegedly Ronald Reagan's favorite show in the late 80s, and Alf was invited to the White House. Take from that what you will. 
Is it still scary? I don't know if it's scary. Is the word for it? Baffling might be better. I cannot believe this show existed. I cannot believe that it was a hit. I cannot believe that it was such a hit that it went international and there was a fucking theme park ride party inspired by Elf in Germany. Nothing about this existence makes sense. I especially can't believe that no one on the show seems to be afraid of Elf. No one screams in terror when they see him. They just assume he's a dog. An advert. And, once or twice, a doll. What the hell kind of doll would that be? Paul Fusco has insisted that he sold the show as soon as the executive saw the elf puppet. Because the executive imagined all merchandising he could do with him. I don't know which is more bizarre to me. That a businessman saw this ugly thing and thought he'd sell well or that he was right? I wonder if the show could have been better if it were in other hands. On the one hand, you can end up with a show like Unhappy Eve After, where a rude uncle-style talking stuffed animal sidekick is explained away as a symptom of the protagonist's schizophrenia, which is very much not how schizophrenia works. It's basically just Alf crossed with a married with children and might be even worse. She seemed embarrassed. The boy who asked the question turned to me and bemused. The kids around me were looking too, and I knew everybody, including the substitute, was wondering the same thing. How did she know that? I'm probably about the same age now as the substitute was then, and I cannot imagine how that must have felt for her. I've worked with kids, and I know they can really catch you off guard. I think that even by 14, I had stopped trying to catch teachers in a mistake. I had realized that if it didn't make me look cool or smart, just unsufferable. Although some friends have suggested it wasn't just that she felt embarrassed to be shown up by a child, maybe I actually touched on something a little more personal and maybe she had to rethink how she used protection. She have think of me, the 14 year old virgin, a Weezer shirt, every time she reached for a condom. That might be the worst kind of sex that Maybe I actually touched on something a little more personal. And maybe she had to rethink how she used protection. She'd have to think of me, a 14-year-old virgin in a Weezer shirt every time she reached for a condom. That might be the worst kind of sex ed education possible, except the abstinence only, of course. Stuff I did this week. I appeared on my dear friend Josh Gondelman's podcast, Make My Day. He asked me to make up a lot of character voices, so if you've ever wanted to hear me play Lovelorn Robot, a low truck with some avoiding attachment issues. You are in luck. Listen here. It's so much fun. I also did an interview about OCD and OCD awareness. Read it here. Fake BBC show of the week. This garden's also private. No having a sit inspired by a true story. Trying to find a place to sit in London last summer. For the birds or why a crow? Hello crows. People say you don't read this, but I don't know if I believe them. You can do all sorts of things. You can reorganize numbers, you can make tools, you can hold funerals. Who's to say that you can't also access the internet? I read a story a few years ago about a little girl who had befriended several of you, and it made me want to be friends with you. In that desperate way you feel when you want to be friends with someone cooler than you. Though it was a little weird to read that you eat chicken nuggets, birds eating other birds, but then humans are mammals, and most of us eat mammals, becoming your friend has become very important to me. And it was so funny, Nico Kaleo, the creator, was sitting with me trying not to laugh at me at laugh at the whole time. We also spent a lot of time talking about cats with his mom and sister after, so a good time was had by all. Finally, an excerpt from the audiobook the, of the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home. The new novel from Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, the writers of Welcome to Night Vale, is out. The faceless old woman is finally telling her story, and she's using her voice. I love this book and experience reading it so much, and I cannot wait for everyone to hear and read it. Listen to it here, and remember, both the book and the audiobook are available for pre-order now. Fake BBC show this week.
Just flower pug talking as she household chores. I'm not a big ASMR, but let me tell you, wouldn't watch that.